Cal Fire has just finished their first C-130 air tanker conversion aircraft, and no sooner did they get it done than it was pressed into service, first in the record fire in Riverside County, Southern California, and today and yesterday here in Sierra County on the Bear Fire. Let's check it out. We've been following the story with CAL FIRE and Brian Baker, the chief pilot down there at CAL FIRE, of the conversion of the seven C-130H models uh, into air tanker aircraft using a Colson aviation style constant flow tank. It's been a long, slow, laborious process, primarily getting the paperwork straightened out on the ownership of these aircraft. But they just got the first one tanker, 122 flying here last week. And this story has a special local Blanco Lirio twist. As you remember, Jordan Smith, this is the young gal that you guys are here on the Blanco Lirio channel sponsored to get her A&P license while well, she left the small town airport here of Grass Valley and has been working at Cal Fire as one of the mechanics on the C-130 program. So she is very proud to see her first C-130 fly. Let's take a look at this airdrop that she got and posted here on Facebook. That's tanker 122 back on our first day as a certified air tanker with the constant flow tank dropping water for the first time. Here's another view from that first flight back on 26 August at McClellan taxiing out on just two engines. So the C-130H has a retardant capability of 4,000 gallons. Now they're only dropping water for these test drops here initially. There's how they uh, fill the tanker up. So it's the same sort of retardant filling system as the other air tankers use. Looks like they got their editing a little backwards here at Cal Fire. You start the engines first and then you taxi out. <laughs> there goes the OV-10 and the S2T and then this new C-130. The big deal with these C-130s as far as Cal Fire goes, Cal Fire is now the world's most formidable aerial firefighting fleet of aircraft. And what the C-130H is going to do for the fleet at CAL FIRE is it's going to give the S-2Ts, the twin engine aircraft, a well-deserved break from firefighting. With the 4,000 gallon capability of the C-130, they'll be able to bring one or two of those S-2Ts in for some long overdue heavy duty maintenance rebuilding of the airframes and still have the coverage that they need to cover the state. So the C-130H is a three-person crew, pilot, co-pilot, and flight engineer there in the middle. And these other guys are just observing the, um, the test flight here. They're not necessary crew members. Now they're dropping water, again, just for testing purposes. And this also shows you the relative ineffectiveness that water can present in fighting firefighters out west. This is why we need to use retardant because the water can mostly evaporate before it hits the ground even at this good drop height of about 150 feet above the tops of the vegetation and 140 or so knots of airspeed the water simply doesn't have the same firefighting retarding effects as does full-on fire retardant with all the clay and additives added to aerial retardant now here's a couple of clips that cal fire posted with their first drop on the fire, the record fire in Riverside, California. With actual fire retardant, much heavier, has a much a longer lasting effect working in the vegetation to help retard the growth of the fire. Again, the whole idea of aerial firefighting using retardant is to slow the advance of the flames so you put the retardant out ahead of the flames right along the line of containment that you want to try to contain the line on here he's going to try to tie into the top of this ridge and extend that line right there to give firefighters on the ground a chance to draw a proper containment line around the fire here's a clip from fox 40 news on the bear fire just yesterday i believe with quite a bit of a pushover at the end of this clip right there as they get over 
over the top of the terrain and start descending. They want to try to keep the retardant at a constant elevation above the terrain. And there you can see the effort of the constant flow tank giving you a constant level of retardant coverage despite how full or how empty the tank is. So all the way down to the very bottom of the tank, you're getting the same coverage level that you demanded, uh, the same as when the tank was full of retardant. In other words, the retardant doesn't taper off at the end of the drop. So again, a big shout out to Jordan Smith and all the mechanics that have been working so hard to get these aircraft converted. They had to cut giant holes into the bottom of the aircraft in order to install the tank. This is uh, posted on NorCal Fireweather photos by Mo Bones. And they had to get all the approvals from Lockheed to, in order to do this major alteration of the airframe to put these tanks in. And this is a significant advantage over the MAFS military C-130s, the modular airborne firefighting fleet, because these are fixed constant flow tanks mounted permanently in the aircraft, which can provide a much greater, a better coverage level and more effective use of the retardant than through the modular system, which spits the retardant out in a kind of a toothpaste fashion out the back of the aircraft. But the advantage of the MAF system is that it's modular. So the C-130s are not permanently, the, the Guard and Reserve C-130s are not permanently assigned to firefighting duty. They can go back to resume normal C-130 missions. But these C-130s converted by CAL FIRE will be permanent air tankers to add to the fleet. And it's just another tool in the tool shed, 4,000 feet here versus the S2T, which has been the backbone of the firefighting program, which has 1,200 gallon capacity up here in the Foothill airports, they will reduce that load to closer to 1,000 gallons or so because of the density altitude operating out of these shorter airstrips. But let me show you another thing that these S2Ts can do even better than the C-130s. And that is this, keeping small fires small. By being able to operate out of these small Foothill airports, right close to these fires. The whole idea of CAL FIRE is to keep the fire small. And if you can get in there quick with an S2, one, two drops with the S2, and they've got this fire stopped. Unfortunately, this fire started by a homeless individual right here in downtown Grass Valley, burned down our local motorcycle shop, Sierra Motorsports, located right here. But the two drops, done by this S2T air tanker right here. The airport's just a mile or two away from this fire site. This was able to stop the fire right here from hopping over the freeway and heading up towards Banner Mountain and the Blanco Lirio Global Headquarters, where there are hundreds, if not thousands, of additional houses. Here's another good example of keeping a small fire small, just one drop right there. And these are hundreds of drops that you don't hear about in the news because they've stopped these fires. It's not until the news get big and out of control. That's when that's when you start seeing the air tankers in the news and the air tankers are much more effective when the fire is small and they can get it stopped. This allows the ground pounders the time to get on the ground to get the cats unloaded off the trailer and get a proper dozer line contained around that fire. Here's a picture of the S2T making that first of two drops over the fire at the motorcycle shop. Police were able to apprehend the homeless woman that started that fire and put her up for a $250,000 bail after causing over a million dollars worth of damage to the motorcycle shop. Unfortunately, the flames got caught into these trees beside the motorcycle shop and got into the back of the motorcycle shop and destroyed everything inside. And here's what it looks like inside the shop today. You guys remember Sue Johnson from the CBX 500 series, a million dollars worth of inventory destroyed. Yes, they have insurance, they will rebuild and they will be back in business. And they're hopefully gonna set up a temporary business somewhere in town here so they can continue to service all their customers while they rebuild. Now, we recently flew over the Park Fire, one of the biggest fires here in California, certainly in Northern California this year, at nearly a half a million acres and still not completely contained. But here we are in the Husky at 8,000 feet over the ignition point right over here where that guy dumped that car off the road 
underneath a set of high tension power lines more on that in a second and this fire is spread as far as the eye can see this is looking up the left flank of the fire along the valley and there's mount lassen way off in the distance so this fire stretches from just a beam chico california all the way up towards mount lassen now one of the reasons this fire couldn't be caught when it was small was because this guy ran the car right down here below these high tension power lines and the air tankers were not able to get down on the fire initially because of these high tension power lines they could not get low enough to be effective with their aerial retardant so they had to wait until the fire scooted out from bes beside these power lines and by then it was off to the rodeo and they started flanking the thing and the fire just kept outrunning them and outrunning them Here's another example where the S2Ts were able to keep the Royal Fire in boxed in at about 215 acres. Again, the S2 being able to quickly and easily get down these steep canyons with their increased maneuverability over that of the C-130. So these two aircraft are two separate tools in the toolbox to be used accordingly. So I'm very proud to see CAL FIRE emerging as the world's leading firefighting aerial firefighting air force uh, it's a long cry from the good old bad old days of air tanker flying when they were operating these old f7f aircraft the mission has not changed that much but the safety and protocols that are established now have helped to make a very dangerous job a much safer job Thank you so much for your support of this channel, especially the folks over on Patreon that make this content possible. See you here.